Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Friday Night Behind the Lens. My name is Paul, and I am joined by Paul Compton here, and more importantly, his wife, Denise. Welcome to you both. Hello, Hi. sir. Hello. Hi. Thank you for joining me tonight. You're welcome. Oh, just, gosh. Something's oh, just gone crap. Just knocked something down <laughs> off my shelf. <laughs> That's a good start. You. That wasn't your whole camera rack behind you. <laughs> yeah, I <would> definitely not, no. <laughs> Oh, great. Well, thanks again for joining me tonight. I really appreciate you guys' time. And, yeah. you know, I started this interview channel for uh, basically to promote smaller YouTubers as a way to kind of get their name out there. And so you're the photographer that has the most amount of views on this. You know, I, I kind of hope, uh, you know, the people that watch my show can kind of tap into what you have to say here and uh, yeah, you know, yeah, sure. Ma yeah. maybe learn a little bit of something about uh, growing their YouTube channel and what it takes to, to get to the level that you're at. Yep, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get started. So for those of you uh, that don't follow you, how about you just tell us a little bit about yourself and where you come from? Right. So my name is Paul Compton. Uh, we go under the elusive name of PD Photography, as in Paul and Denise. Uh, my wife comes and joins me quite a lot as well and is well known as Mrs. C. Um, <laughs> I'm originally from London, which is not very photographic, uh, but uh, live up in Cheshire now. So in Cheshire, I'm quite lucky in the UK, that is. Um, to have a lot of countryside not too far away from me so uh, getting out and about was quite a quite it's quite easy to get out to different areas and different places and of course living in the UK we've got a quite a diverse countryside and surrounding you know sea and seascapes and mountains and stuff yeah, so, yeah pretty cool. Uh, Denise are you from London as well or? No I'm Cheshire born and bred. Oh local um, girl huh? Yeah all my, <laughs> my family is still here um, and I met Paul eight years ago mm -hmm. um, when he, he lives or well, lived in the same town that I worked in just the next town along. So it's, a, you know, it's weird to think that I'd sort of passed him probably on hundreds and hundreds of occasions and, and uh, not kind of realized where we would end up. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but there we go. <laughs> but Paul actually bought me my first camera. Um, eight years ago, and it was a, a Sony A100, A100, I think. A100, A100, sure. Yeah. yeah never I'm a, had I'm a, a Sony shooter, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> From having like a tiny little, um, I used to have like a, a, an automatic Canon, uh, I can't even remember what it was, but it was like an old film camera. That was the only camera that I'd, I'd ever had. So when he, he sort of gave me this, you know, A100 as a Christmas present eight years ago, I was like, wow look at all the buttons what how what on earth am i going to do with all those i don't know what they do well i think you broke it within a week didn't you i dropped it on christmas <laughs> <laughs> i opened it on christmas morning i had knocked it off the side by the evening yeah. <laughs> and i had to i had to go and have it repaired so yeah so uh, it was pretty yeah, that was, <laughs> that was a yeah. <laughs> bit and strange so, and the photography bug hit you back then eight years ago so i think it was because i did i didn't have a clue what anything meant on the buttons um i was like aperture priority straight over my head not a clue just the speeds no idea what you're talking about no. paul actually took me to a, a, a like a motorway um bridge flyover type thing didn't was, yeah, yeah. Um, with a tripod and we, we photographed light trails oh yes so probably Love one of the that. yeah the very first kind of photographs that i was taking were light trails and just, just of the cars and I was like whoa yeah. look at that and, and that was it I mean that's smart that's a great way to learn I just did a video from, on my channel on you know in, in the winter I get kind of bored here because the you know the, it's kind of the sunshine state right there's no clouds yeah, yeah. not much weather going on so I go down to our train tracks and I shoot train trails you know, yeah. Yeah. Train yeah. trails. You know it just keeps me in practice keeps keeps me sharp so that's a great way to mm -hmm. learn yeah, I mean, back then it wasn't, I mean, I've got my YouTube channel now, but back then we didn't have the YouTube channel. It was just random photography. You know, we were going out, taking pictures of anything and everything and stuff like that. Sure, yeah. And I think Denise was always coming out with us because we always went everywhere together. We so used to just, actually go around all just the habit, her really. heritage sites, yeah, wasn't we it? Yeah, we and heritage just sites old and, buildings and things. And uh, National Trust places and buildings mm -hmm. like that, you see, old old castles and abbeys and ruins. So we were, that's, that's how we used to sort of make our plans to go around the country. And she just sort of got into photography because I was doing it. So she was sort of tagging along um, more for me because now she's probably, <laughs> she gets more feedback than I do, really. <laughs> uh, she's quite no, good yeah. from what I've seen. Yeah, she's not bad. Yeah, she's not bad. But she's a teacher. She teaches art. So she knows the basics of like the rules of thirds and how things should mm. look because of doing art and painting and stuff like that. 
you, you need to know those things, don't you? So, yeah, she's already got the building blocks. So giving her a camera was just the next step. So, yeah, she's uh, yeah, pretty pretty good at it. <laughs> so you, you got her into photography, but when did you get into photography yourself? That's, I mean, I've, I've, I've listened to people talking on YouTube, you know, saying, oh, I've been in photography for 30 odd years and things like that. And I'm like, God, that's a long time. And it was only probably last year or maybe the year before that I come to realize that I've been doing photography as long as they have. I've, I'm, I'm 52 this year. And I remember my first trip to London when I lived in London, you know, our school trips and our, our, our days out were into London. And I remember my mum giving me a camera and I took it to Tower Bridge, which, you know, everyone in the world knows where Tower Bridge is in London. Yep. And I remember taking a photograph there and I was wowed by, you know, being able to take pictures. And it was only little square format things, you know, they were just it was just an old camera. And uh, so I suppose I've been into photography since then. And I'm actually behind me there. I've got a Dynax up on the wall and Minolta Dynax up on the shelf behind me. And that was my first proper SLR camera I bought when I started working. And uh, then you end up, you know, taking lots of pictures of your car, driving around in your mates and things like that. So I've always been into photography, but not too serious about it. Um, I knew a friend that did some Lightroom, you know, darkroom stuff. So I've seen darkrooms and done some black and white photography of him. And then I was asked to do weddings and stuff like that. So I have, I've done that a lot, but I didn't really quite get into it until it went digital and decided to buy myself a digital camera. And I went Sony because the Sony lenses were compatible with the Minolta. Um, but needless to say, you change everything for, you know, you don't keep those lenses because they're old lenses. So, yeah, I, I changed lenses, joined camera clubs. I've been into camera clubs for probably 12, 15 years, maybe, which is another thing, you know, it got Denise into, she used to come to the camera clubs with me and then that's how got us sort of more interested in the photography. Um, and comp against yeah, other, competitions and competing. But after a while, after doing that for a lot of years, I got to, um, I got my accreditation of a CPAGB, which in Britain is quite, uh, quite an achievement to get. That's your first stepping stone on the ladder. And uh, I achieved that and I got to, you know, got to winning the competitions and stuff. Wow. And it, I got to the stage where I was taking photographs for the judge and not necessarily for me. I wasn't really enjoying the photography. It was more, I was only taking pictures to please somebody else, you know, to try and win. And in the end, I just sort of, I need a break and I got out of it. And Denise said, what are you going to do now? And then I got talking to a few, you know, local photographers like Mr. Chris Sale and stuff, uh, who's, a, who's a vlogger. And he said, well, give it a go if you think you can do it. I said, well, I don't know whether I can. So yeah, I just basically picked up my camera and started vlogging mm -hmm. and it's, it's been going ever since. So, so you started always, about photography for me, about, I've always been into photography really forever. So you started the vlogging about three years ago. Is that right? Uh, almost. Uh, yeah, I think you're yeah, 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 yeah. So you started yeah, out as a Sony shooter, but you're shooting Fuji now. Yeah, I'm shooting Fuji now. I started off in Sony um, when I went to the camera club, because I had a, a Sony a 77. I had a Sony a 580. Um, I started off with the A100 and the A, the next one up from that, the A200, I think it was. Um, but they're just they're, they're starter cameras, aren't they? You know, they're great when you you know you never had one before. But when you join the camera club, you start to realise the gear you've got is probably not on a par to what they've got. And when you start talking to the big guys that are winning the competitions, it's all about the glass. It's all about the glass. You've got a better glass. I mean, I had one of my favourite lenses was a 50 to 500, I think it was massive lens it'd do everything from 50 to 500 but it's just not good at any of it you know mm -hmm. it, it can do it it can do everything but it can't it Jack can't achieve plates. everything you know so i was just told that i had to buy better lenses and to buy better lenses you really needed to go with canon and nikon really yeah. and that was that was the choice canon and nikon they've got the full array of glass and that's the stepping stone so i looked at the cameras and i couldn't decide between canon and nikon because i love the way the Nikon looked and the layout because it was like the Sony, but the Canon had white lenses and let's face it, they <laughs> look professional, white. don't they? So I went with the white lenses. <laughs> that was, that's the only reason I went to Canon because I like the white lens and you see them at the football pitch. So uh, yeah, that's, that's why. I, that's I, so I, funny. I absolutely hate the look of white lenses. I hate them. <laughs> I just think it looks odd, but you know, I mean, yeah, no, you see a white lens, it's, good, it's a good lens, right? <laughs> Yeah, it does. It does look odd, but at the end of the day, you know, they're the ones you see on the football matches, aren't they? All these big white lenses. So I thought, oh, they got to be professional, wouldn't they? They look good. And it was all about that. It was all about the image, really, I think, more than what the cameras could do. Because I didn't really know what the cameras were capable of. Um, and then I moved from the Canon range from the A7, uh, the D770, or 70D, sorry, 70D, yeah. 
Um, then I went up to You've got five, I've got, got the five D, but I went to a seven D. Then I got the five D Mark three, five D ended up with five D Mark four, um, seven D Mark two for speed. Cause we were doing sport and all sorts of stuff like that. So yeah, I had a full, a full set of Canon gear, but, uh, the Fuji came along cause we did a bit of street photography. And then I kept picking up the Fuji. It was easy to pick up the Fuji. And I think it's just everything more fun. Everything became really heavy as well, yeah, didn't it? Become the, heavy, the lenses the became heavier more, and the cameras were heavier. More and... fun. Because Denise had the Canon as well. You know, she'd gone now. She was on the, A7, uh, the 70D, 70D and that. And she was loving it. But, yeah, it was just the Fuji became more fun. And so I've now totally transferred, you know, everything over onto Fuji. I sold all my Canon gear. Par one lens. I've got one lens <laughs> left. 7200. Um, but yeah, other than that, Denise, are you shooting Fuji as well? I, when Paul, um, Paul uh, started at first with the XT1. I'm laughing because I know what she's going to say. I know say. it, yeah. <laughs> he got the XT1 and then the XT2 came out and he was like, oh, this is an amazing camera. You know, just think if I get this one, you could have the XT1 and just think of the photographs that you could, you know, take and all the rest of it. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, fine. And then the XT. Three. three came out and he said just think of the photographs that you could take with the xt2 <laughs> <You know? laughs> and whatever you... so then the xt3 arrived i see and, what he's doing <laughs> and i took i took his xt2 and i said please change, she she change the name i said because that, that is now my camera yeah and he was like i can't believe you're taking it from me and i said and i can't believe that you thought i wouldn't when yeah. you've just made this big sales <laughs> the big sales pitch yeah. about the xt3 she, and... she tells everyone i give her my cast offs but uh Unfortunately, I've always improved my camera to try and improve myself. And you think it's always the better thing to do, get a better camera. But Denise has proved time and time again that she seems to pull off better images out the X-T2 than I do out of my X-T4 now, you know. Yeah. And you think the next stepping stone would be passing over my X-T3. But because I, I've always had two bodies, they're both mine at the moment. So we'll wait for him to bring out an X-T5 and then maybe she'll get the X-T3. <laughs> I, I think you got to just skip up to the XT4 when he gets the XT5. Well, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> but no, I just enjoy the Fuji now. That's that's kind of why I've changed. I enjoy the Fuji. I think a lot of people have that same feeling as well. It's a fun camera to use, and it's it's got all the dials and buttons on it. When you get used to them, it's, it's all right. Mm. It's all right. It's quite it's good definitely, fun. It's definitely, definitely easier on your, your shoulders, your mm -hmm. back and everything. Yeah. Just to have, you know, I, I hate... I must say, I'm one of these people. I I actually hate hoofing it up a hill or a mountain. I I, yeah. I every step I'm going up. I'm, Why am I doing this? Why am I? Well, then when I get to the top, I think yeah, you know, done it. I hate doing it with weight on my back. Yeah. Well, I take you know, I take my wife out occasionally when she she's a teacher, school teacher. So you know, occasionally she'll come out with me if I'm doing a vlog, and it's not a I don't want to say it's a fight, but it's a, it's a process to get her to agree to go with me. <laughs> but once she gets there, she has the time of her life, you know, yeah, but it's yeah. just, a, it's a fight to get her to actually yeah. get her to do it. So I, I, I understand that, you know, it's no fun going up a hill till you get to the top. No, yeah, definitely don't enjoy going up. But, you know, Denise is not one. I mean, I've had many people say to me, you know, through me vlogging and through our Facebook group and that, that, you know, oh, why don't you give her this? Why don't you get her a better tripod? Why don't you give her a better lens? Why she don't carry them. No, I can't. She won't I, carry I won't, them. It's no good giving her anything more. She won't carry them. So, you know, it's 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 a pretty good partnership we've got. You know, she's yeah. happy to keep what she's got and I've got all the rest of the gear. <laughs> right. So yeah, no, it's all right. I still get better results anyway. You do, you? yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you have about if I counted right, a little over two hundred uh, videos on, under your belt now. Yep. I went back and watched your first vlog. That you had there. So, how do you feel your vlogging style has changed from vlog, I don't know, vlog, really. I mean, vlog number two? Uh, I hope it's not changed a lot. I've probably got better at it. I think that's the word. I certainly haven't got good at it. I think because I'm very rough around the edges, I don't want to spend my time concentrating on how to make a perfect video. That's not me. I don't want to. I don't want to make a small movie because um, if I did we'd never you'd, you'd never get away from me would you you know but they're long enough or they are my videos I don't make short videos um, and I ramble on a lot and I think that's the thing when I first started I literally picked my iPhone up and I had it in my hand other phones are available I picked my <laughs> iPhone up and I literally held it in my hand on my glove and spoke to it and that's all I did and I remember showing it to it was again Chris Sale who I got my you know who encouraged me to have a go I sent it to him and he said was that your first vlog 
I said, yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly how it came out of the camera. He said, that's brilliant. He said, you've, you've got the gift of the gab. He said, just, just do that. Mm. So I'm hoping that my style hasn't <laughs> changed. I hope I still am the same rough edge, you know, ex Cockney, ex Londoner sort of thing. And just coming across as more of a, a day out on an adventure and we're taking photographs. Um, I started purely because I watched a lot of the big guys, Thomas Eaton, Nigel Dampson, Simon Baxter, Nick Page and things. You, you look at all the big guys and they're taking these amazing, amazing photographs. They've got every day of the week to pick the weather. They've got every day of the week to plan and go and, and work out the shoots. I've got a full time job. You know, my, I'm not a photographer. I'm not a full time photographer. So I get the weekend and I wanted to bring the real life back to reality or reality back to real life and photography and show people you can still get a picture no matter what the weather is what the conditions are and pretty much where you go it, i think i've just got better at it you know knowing how to edit the videos a bit mm. better how to you know make it stream a little bit better but i'm, I'm by no ends a professional style of uh, vlogger that's for sure now do you that kind of leads me into my next question do you have any plans on you said you have a full-time job do you have any plans on going to full-time photography or are you happy with what you're doing i would i would love to i would love to be full-time um i do the odd you know i do the odd workshop and stuff like that um and i've done weddings and stuff in the past and things now i wouldn't want to be a wedding photographer there's a lot of work in that but i've done enough weddings for friends and family well. and things like that you know and friends of friends to know to know that you know to know the game and to know how it works but there's a lot of work and a lot of responsibility to make it professional in photography, you've got to do a lot of the rough, you know, as long as, uh, you know, you've got to take the rough with the smooth and it wouldn't all be just going out and enjoying the countryside and taking pictures. It's yeah. going to be a lot of classroom stuff and home stuff and remedial office stuff. And, and I'm, I'm not into that. And, and the side, the biggest side for me, which I'd struggle with, and this is probably being dyslexic and stuff like that is, I'm not very good at the, the technical side of it. You know, the business side, I'd right. have to have Denise, on hand to be able to do all the business side, how to balance the books and how to do all this and things. So it would take a lot of the fun out of it. I wouldn't say no, I would love to be, you know, a full-time photographer, preferably landscaping, doing workshops and doing tours and stuff. I'd absolutely love doing that, but. Your photography I, would then I have don't, to take yeah, I, It would, yeah, it, so it would it take a back, back step for me for the photography. But on the other hand, like I say, it's just the responsibility. I've got a full-time job and to give that up, especially as the situation we're in, no one would, take a risk to give up the job you know so yeah as much as i'd love to i can't see me ever becoming full-time but as i get older maybe it's something i can do towards retirement do a little bit more photography and less hands-on work now uh has covid uh really kind of put the the workshops on the back burner for you it's yeah totally i mean i had a guy come on today we were due to go out in march which was already put back and put back and he's actually asked me today um, whether he can pull back the re you know the deposit i said yeah that's fine it's not a problem i said the situation is what it is um so we're, yeah we're it's, we, we have done lockdown. i think i've done one since last march yeah. you know because I had, I had so many lined up and they've all been pushed back to this year but again i don't i don't see us being able to get out and and be comfortable i don't know i think i had two last year uh, that we managed mm -hmm. to do it was just it's just difficult to get out and, and do it safely really it looks like I, I think I heard on your news today. It's looking like you're in lockdown at least until what, end of February, early March. Yeah, more than that. They were saying, I think five, six weeks. Yeah, you know, so. the our schools um, are, are still all closed. Yeah. Apart from like our school isn't because we've got a lot of vulnerable kids um, that we look Denise after. Is a teacher as well, and, so. oh. and the, all the and the key worker kids and what have you. So we've had to we've had to stay open for those. Um, but for the rest of the schools, everything's gone to online learning, and um, you know they said that they won't they won't even look at opening the schools until about the eighth of March, over here. Mm. So, what percentage of kids, if you don't mind me asking, are are in school? The, like the key worker kids, how many? Is that twenty percent um, of the kids? Or? We no, yeah we we've not got many, is it? There's, no, the we've, schools. It's hard to see what the schools are going in because Denise works in a separate school, as is you know it's different to a, a mainstream kind of. mainstream yeah. school. Um, but there are a percentage of kids going in, but not many, I don't think, not many no. at all. I don't see many, like, you know, going to go to and fro to work. You don't see many people and buses and coaches and stuff on the road. There's hardly anything around, so it's pretty Everything's quiet. just gone, has yeah, gone to Zoom quiet. virtual learning and, and what have you at the minute, but it's quite... Yeah, it's a tough, tough situation. Yeah. My wife's a science teacher, and um, 
she also her education is special uh, we call it special education here so she gets a lot of the the kids with um, autism and you know ms and down syndrome so um, she's in a mixed class right now and, and at the beginning of the school year here her class started off really small but over the months it's grown and grown and grown it's almost back to about i don't know about 75 yeah. percent of the uh, the kids are back in their classroom now so you know, we worry about, you know, health, but we also worry about the education of the kids too, you know. Yeah. It, it's a terrible, oh, terrible yeah. situation yeah. for all around. Our daughter's studying at the moment. She's in college, so everything's online. You know, she's studying, it's all Zoom messages and online courses and stuff. So, yes, yeah, it can't be easy. All right. COVID. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm tired of talking. It feels like I talk about it every day, you know, just because of my wife. It's, but... yeah, it's just a subject that's on everybody's mind all the I'm time. I'm actually getting the COVID vaccine tomorrow. And I'm and I'm kind of dread I'm dreading it a little bit, but you know it's one of those things because you thought, oh, well, by the time it gets around to my stage, age, yeah, by the, the time it gets around to like our age group, every you know all the sort of flood, the uh, floors and mm. everything else will have been ironed out, and then. But I think they're just that desperate to get the schools opened and yeah. get them open safely that they're vaccinating all the all the teachers and, and yeah. school staff. Good for you. You know, when you when you think of the photography side of it, everything's just stopped. You know, yeah. I think that's the hard thing. There's everyone's in hard situations, but I think people that get out and do a lot of photography and rely on that, you know, especially yeah. if you're full time. But over, is, but you can actually, hard. if you're a professional photographer over here, you can go out and do your job. If it's your job, if it's your job to be a professional out, photographer, you're, you're allowed, allowed out. But if you're it, just but... an amateur sort of hobbyist mm-hmm. photographer, um, you're not allowed out. You know, yeah. I can't even remember what the what the distance is that we're don't know don't know but all I we're know pretty is, much we're, we're in lockdown <laughs> over here pretty much seen, so we're, we're kind of limited and... to you know so, so many miles from your from where sure. you live and i haven't you know, seen around wales your local the town or anything for, for months so many mm. months it's all going to be new when i go out next now hopefully this is the lockdown that that does it for you guys you know yeah just... hopefully now we're gonna to have to cut off the interview at this point we had some audio problems happen that we weren't aware of while we were recording you might have heard it there at the end we had a little bit of a hum and it just continued to get worse as the interview went on plus our microphone levels dropped off so we'll cut it off here but paul and denise have been kind enough to agree to re-record the second part of the interview and we'll get that released to you as soon as we can so thank you all so much for tuning in tonight and thanks to paul and denise compton for doing this interview with me uh, it's been fantastic so far and we'll like i said we'll get that second part of the interview out to you as soon as we can. Thanks everybody. Have a great night and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.